Okay, this video is not going to be easy to film. I might start crying, I might delete it later, we'll see. Ever since I was like 15 I've been wanting to do a PhD in physics and for over a year I have been pursuing my PhD and recently I quit. This is probably very confusing because you've seen my YouTube channel which is all about my PhD mainly and now I'm telling you that I quit. What is going on? So let me tell you the story about how I ended up in this position. Basically after my master I was doing a research internship where I was doing research on fundamental physics similar to what I've done in my thesis and I really enjoyed that and maybe there was some miscommunication but probably I was just being delusional because I was telling myself that oh I can just continue at this university and do my PhD in this topic but then when this internship came to an end they told me that no we actually don't have funding for an entire PhD so you need to find a position on your own and I freaked out. <laughs> I only had a few months to find a PhD to start in September. So I made a lot of applications and I also got a few offers from Germany, from the Netherlands, etc. And at that point in time I was very lost in my research. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do for the PhD so I considered a lot of different options and the topic that I ended up choosing was not something that I considered working on before but I thought that okay I need to stop being so narrow-minded in what I do and I should give this field a shot because it's a very hot topic right now um, so it could be a good career choice for me to do this PhD. <laughs> so the topic was in like observational astronomy and I think that people who come from a kind of observational astronomy background and people who come from a physics background are very different people most of the time. The way of working is very different, the methods are very different. I guess I felt very quickly that this is not a good fit for me and this is not what I want to do or how I want to do science. Nothing against observational astronomy, there's a lot of cool things you can do there, it's just not for me. But I find it very difficult to quit things and um, I didn't want to be in the situation where I had to quit my PhD. So I think I just forced myself to try and enjoy this topic that I wasn't super interested in, which is very difficult. Then alongside that, I also developed my own interest for machine learning and how it can be applied in astrophysics. And this is something that I'm very passionate about, and that is what I've been making my videos evolving around. The problem is that the grant requirements for my PhD were very strict, so I was not allowed to change my research direction into physics and machine learning. So that led me to after a year having to take this decision that okay i don't want to do this original topic that i was hired for i want to pursue my passion for physics and machine learning and i can't do this if i'm part of this phd program it was very hard i cried many hours every day for months which is why i have not been uploading that much <laughs> yeah it was very hard I was very hard getting emotional i started to feel very behind i think in life because if i start over with a new phd program now then i would feel like i could have been a postdoc in this time because now it's like i have half a phd and have to start over but it's not really the case like it's not like i start went here and then went back it's like i start went here and i'm continuing here i have learned a lot about myself about relationships with other people both in my personal life and professional life i learned a lot about research i found a topic that i'm deeply passionate about that i want to pursue gained a lot of skills in machine learning and even if it was very hard i also felt a sense of relief once i told my supervisor that okay i think i shouldn't continue this phd program um and i don't know i have a very obsessive mind. I have never done anything that I'm not like super passionate about and that's probably some person born in the late 90s thing <laughs> that we, we can't do jobs that we're not passionate about. And I think I also felt sad because my family has obviously seen me like pursuing this dream for like over a decade um, and they were very proud of me for like doing my PhD and I started to feel that oh I'm just letting my entire family down <laughs> but even more so I felt like I was letting myself down because I felt like this big part of me was taken from me and I didn't know what to do. Yeah I struggle a lot because I think I have a tendency to stay in the past and like go down a negative thought spiral but I think when you are in this kind of situation that I am I think it's very good to try to focus more on the future. Think about 
and write down all of the lessons that you have learned from this time and think about what you're going to do next. Also, having a very strong support system, which I talked about in another video, is very important. My friends have been very helpful in making me feel better and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, let's say. But let's talk about something a bit more positive, like what I'm doing next. It's very hard because I really want to pursue my PhD, but I also decided to kind of take a bit of a break and not do research. So I've been looking into a lot of options in industry, which is not something I've considered before. But I think now when I'm more interested in machine le learning rather than just theoretical fundamental physics, it's a lot easier to think about going into industry because there's a lot of jobs where I can do similar things to what I'm doing now, but with a higher salary as well. But the non-academic job market is very confusing. <laughs> it is very confusing. Like, I know how to write a scientific resume and scientific cover letter, but for non-scientific jobs, I have no idea. It's very hard. <laughs> so I've been having so many meetings with so many different people about like, how do I get a job outside of academia? How do I fix my resume? You work at this company, what is it like? Can you write me a reference? It's very confusing. I I don't think that you are smarter or a better person just because you're in academia. For me it's not so important whether I'm in academia or, or in industry, for me it's more important like what kind of job I will be doing in either case. And I do see some companies that I think do pretty interesting stuff where I could definitely see myself working long term, but at the same time I really struggle to let go of this research dream that I have. I feel very haunted by all of these topics and I want to continue pursuing them. So I have still been looking into some PhD positions that I will be applying for, also other funding options, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard because there's a lot of budget cuts going on in academia at the moment because of various political reasons. I really hope I can find either a job in industry or in academia that I really enjoy. And also think that even if I were to leave academia and go to industry, I would still be able to keep some of the physics collaborations I have and be able to do some research. And I still have all of my friends here. It's It's been hard. I've been crying a lot and it's a very difficult time. But I think I can make it through and put myself into a better position than I were when I was doing this PhD program. Now, I'm sure you're all very curious. Do I have any regrets? Would I still recommend someone else to do a PhD? And the answer is, I absolutely would. Even if this time has been very hard and I've gone through a lot of things, I still don't regret the choice that I made. As I mentioned, I found research that I'm very passionate about that I want to continue doing and I learned so much. There were a lot of hard life lessons, but I'm happy to have learned them. And I still really enjoyed the nice parts I got to experience of research and I want to continue that part. So I would still recommend other people to do a PhD and I hope this video doesn't scare anyone. Yeah, I think if you find a good supervisor and a good group, then usually the PhD is very nice. I think my grant that I was on was just very like, special and it's usually not the case that you are not allowed to change your research. Usually when people hire a PhD, they don't really know what the PhD is going to do. So they are happy if the PhD has their own ideas to work on. So don't be alarmed by that. <laughs> yeah, and I think you learn a lot about yourself. There are a lot of hard times in a PhD. Most people go through some period of depression <laughs> during their PhD and some people don't. But the thing is that I don't think the PhD is a job per se. It's more like this thing that is your own. So I would still recommend people if they are thinking of doing a PhD. Find a good supervisor who does work that you really enjoy and just go for it. It's great. I still also think it's good to maybe between the master and the PhD take a year off and like do a, some traineeship or something in a company because then you also gain some technical skills that you can use for the PhD later on. I think that's a very good option too. And if you don't want to do a PhD, that's also fine. Live your life because you can still do research without having a PhD. At the end of the day, you only get one life and you need to do what makes you happy not other people. So what does this situation mean for my channel? <laughs> I will still continue posting videos more frequently now that I've shared this video, which has been very hard to sit down and film. <laughs> I would like to share some vlogs about how my job search is going. Maybe I will make another video about this topic or like what I think about academia versus industry. I will share how my search for founding is going for the PhD, if I will ever continue to do a PhD, share some tips 
and insights what i learned on this journey and i hope that you stay to see what happens next because this youtube channel has really helped my mental health a lot um it's really nice to see people commenting and like caring about what i post even if it's not that many people at the moment i really appreciate it so thank you very much for watching i will see you in whatever i do next literally bye